F. Gregory Campbell is the president of Carthage College and a professor of history. Dr. Campbell came to Carthage in August 1987 from the University of Chicago, where he had been special assistant to the president, secretary of the board of trustees, and senior lecturer. Under his leadership at Carthage, two major curriculum reforms have restored structure and emphasized classical approaches to arts and sciences education. Full-time student enrollment has grown from 800 to 2,500, and total enrollment now exceeds 3,400 students. In the following interview, Dr. Campbell discusses the importance of a classic liberal education and the teaching of America's founding principles in history with the Jack Miller Center's Mike Deshays. Carthage College is a well-known proponent of a classic liberal education. Dr. Campbell, tell us why a classic liberal education is so important. People will uh, have many jobs in their lifetimes. Americans change jobs frequently. There is no school that can train a person to do what he or she will be asked to do 10, 15, 20, let alone 30 or 40 years into the future because those will be new techniques at that point in time. What we can do is help the kids learn how to learn, help them to become educable. And there's no better way than an education in the arts and sciences uh, to become lifelong learners. If you're going to have a successful professional career, you need to be able to keep on learning. And education in really any particular discipline across the arts and sciences is the best way to do that, far better than some kind of narrow technical uh, skill training that is good uh, only for a short space of time. Please describe the Western Heritage Program here at Carthage, and in particular, the Great Ideas Program. Uh, we're very proud of Western Heritage. Uh, we have worked over a number of years to create it. It goes back actually as far as 1989, uh, has uh, developed uh, particularly uh, well in recent years. The Western Heritage courses are required of every single Carthage student. They are two courses. So that means that every freshman takes uh, a Western Heritage course each term during his or her freshman year. It's a course in great ideas. It is a course that emphasizes original texts. We do not uh, go easily on them. They read the text themselves. The reading list this year starts with Homer and goes through Plato and Aristotle and the Bible, Virgil. There is an optional selection on Augustine. Uh, it comes on up into Renaissance times, and actually they use paintings as texts, too. Uh, so uh, uh, that's the first term, and then they pick up from there, and they have uh, Dante and Shakespeare and Rousseau and uh, John Locke and Jefferson, Marx and Engels, uh, Darwin, uh, the text, The Origin of the Species, they read that. We think that if you expose young people to some of the most profound thinkers in human history, uh, they will be challenged to do better thinking themselves. And they can come to terms. Because what this really is, as we go back in our own culture and come across time, uh, what we're doing is introducing this generation to the great conversation that has gone on for 2,500 or 3,000 years in Western culture. And if they are to know what they're looking at in an art gallery, or to pick up on the illusions in literature in all directions, in all kinds of ways, they're going to need some vocabulary of what has developed across the centuries. They're going to have to enter, in other words, into that great conversation that has spanned the centuries among thinkers and writers uh, and will continue and they will become a part of it. Each generation becomes a part and adds its own thoughts and perspectives and passes those on to the next. But we can become a part of something much greater than ourselves by engaging in that great conversation. And the wonder of it is, is it asks questions, it doesn't give all the answers because these people across the centuries have not agreed among themselves. You know? And the students soon figure out they can't agree with everybody they're reading one after another. And lo and behold, when that dawns on them, then they have to start thinking for themselves. What do I think about what I'm hearing? You know? Where do I stand? And that is a liberating experience. It also is making educable people. Dr. Campbell, in your mission statement here at Carthage College, you say that Carthage recognizes that the quest for truth is a lifelong journey. Tell us how Carthage prepares its students for a lifelong journey. 
Uh, let me talk about that vision statement for a moment. It was refashioned and adopted uh, just a couple years ago. And we started out with the objective of having a vision statement for the college uh, that would fit onto a coffee cup. In other words, it needed to be short, it needed to be succinct, and it needed to be strong. It needed to be, most of all, true. After a good deal of discussion, we came up with uh, seven words. It was seeking truth, building strength, inspiring service, together. Now that first part, seeking truth, I think says a lot. Those two words are chosen with uh, great care. Uh, it is not always the case in academia these days that people talk about truth. There's a tendency to shy away from the, the, the very idea of truth. Uh, we do not shy away from that at Carthage. Uh, we do believe that there is something to be discovered, uh, not just invented. We do believe that there is a world out there and an order that uh, we ourselves have not created or, or caused to happen. Uh, so there is something independent of us that we can learn, that we can attempt to discover, but that we don't create. And the other word, seeking, uh, if stop and think about that for a moment, you don't seek something you already have. So there's absolutely no claim on our part that we know what that truth is. But we're questing. We are seeking. Uh, that's an inspiring enterprise in and of itself. Uh, it makes for, uh, I think, for useful and happy lives, and that's why we're here. We're teaching college. If you believe that there's something, that there's real meaning in life, and if you're seeking to discover it and to push the frontiers of your understanding, that's a healthy way to live. Dr. Campbell, describe your view as to why it's so important for college students to study America's founding principles and history. Great nations have great ideas. Uh, we are founded on ideas. Our reason for existence, if we have any reason other than just keeping the metabolical processes going, uh, is ideas. There's something we're committed to. In the United States, we're very fortunate to have uh, founders, the founding fathers, who had great vision. They were well-educated men. They were also very practical men. They were men who were uh, developing farms, uh, developing small cities, doing whatever they were doing, but they were men uh, of ideas and vision and goals. A free life an order of society in which everybody participates and helps to decide what's going to happen. Those are very powerful ideas. And of course, a few decades later, Lincoln's comment, government of the people, by the people, for the people, that is not to be denigrated or forgotten. That is to be held on to, because that is an inspiring vision and has been not only for us, but for people around the world. It isn't just unique to Americans. It is something that communicates to virtually any human being. If we understand more about our history, we'll understand that it isn't all wonderful. If we teach 12-year-olds truly about American history, we're going to teach them about the blemishes as well as about the accomplishments. That's real life, and that helps to create mature people of mature understanding. I do believe that there are great ideas at our origins and in our development and we will do very well to hold on to them and to pass them on uh, to the next generation and future generations after them. Dr. Campbell, thank you for your time today. Thank you. This has been a Jack Miller Center Digital Media Production. For more information about the Jack Miller Center for Teaching America's Founding Principles and History, visit www.jackmillercenter.org.